want to make a brief video about sugar gliders. So I have two of them, as you can see. This one is um, what's called a black beauty. Um, his name is Nightcrawler. And he was my first sugar glider. I had him by himself for about, oh, I don't know, three months, which a lot of people say you're not supposed to do. Um, but he actually bonded with me really uh, pretty intensely. Um, I think that had a lot to do with it too. Um, he really is a sweet, sweet animal. Um, this other one is a leucistic. And his name is Stardust. Um, he's a little bit younger. I actually had one of the reasons that took me a while, um, and he had to be alone for a little bit, is because his uh, little buddy here was actually not old enough to be separated from his mother for a while. So, um, I just wanted to make a brief video on, uh, to tell people a little bit about sugar gliders. So, um, as you can tell, they're really, really cute. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty much the cutest animal on the planet. They're also really, really um, smart, really needy. Um, they need a lot of attention and love. Um, they need, um, you know, their, their diets aren't like really, I wouldn't say they're really difficult, but they are specific. So um, I feed them HPW. I also feed them a variety of um, fresh fruits and veggies every day. I also feed them little um, baby snacks as treats to reward them for good behavior. Um, so now obviously I couldn't do this type of thing, you know, just walk around the house with them crawling all over me like this when I first got them. Um, this was something that um, took about about a month, um, maybe a little more, a month, month and a half for each of them. Um, Stardust actually took a little bit longer. Um, when I got him, he was actually very bitey um, and barky. He was barking all the time. Um, so a lot of times when people get them, they will actually get the impression that they're aggressive animals because of their biting. You know, someone will go pick them up and uh, the sugar glider will real quickly just bite and they'll usually make a barking sound. It's a really nasty sound too. Um, mine don't even do that anymore. I can't remember the last time it, they barked. They do make um, a barking sound occasionally. It's not the same though. It's kind of cute. It sounds like a really small puppy and they they do it as a way to communicate to me. Um, if I, let's say that I forget to feed them um, at the time that they want, they will bark to let me know. Like, oh, you forgot to feed us, we're waiting. Um, and they will just bark incessantly until I go and feed them. So, they're, they're incredibly um, sweet animals. Um, I would not recommend them for first time pet owners. I would not recommend them for children unless um, it's somebody who's had a pet before or somebody who has, um, you know, who's going to be having help taking care of the sugar glider. Um, because I just feel like um, a small child, um, it, it would just be too much responsibility. And um, too much could go wrong with a sugar glider because um, they are so intelligent. If you, they're very impressionable as well. And um, if you don't spend enough time with them, they will actually become um, fearful of 
people. Um, and then it's going to be hard to, to find them a home or to adopt them out. They actually will become bonded to their owner, as you can see. Um, I mean, right now if they wanted to, they could, you know, fly across the room, jump across the room, but um, they don't want to. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. Um, Nightcrawler is usually always right here. He's usually always on my back, for whatever reason. He's kind of, um, Stardust is, he's kind of new to being um, loose like this. Um, usually, um, I would have a pouch with me. Um, and this provides them a safe zone. So, if, let's say they come out and they see a light or they hear a sound that scares them, I would wear this around my neck and the pouch would be open and they could run back into the pouch at any time. Um, but they're actually to the point now that they, they don't need the pouch because they, uh, they trust that they're going to be safe with me and that I'll protect them. So, um, yeah, I guess that's uh, all I wanted to say for now. Um, also, if you do get sugar gliders, make sure that you get a very large cage for them with lots of toys. Um, and if you do make that decision, um, just one last thing, be prepared for um, a nocturnal pet. Um, that's one thing that um, you, you hear before you get one, but I don't think you really fully understand. They are nocturnal. And they are very nocturnal. So, um, I mean, this is, right now it's about 9 p.m. And this is as active as they are at this time. When it's about 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., they are acrobats. They are flying and jumping. And, um, I would not want to be holding them at that time. Let's just put it that way. So they need a very large cage, they need lots of toys, and you need to make sure that everyone in your household is okay with you having them um, in your apartment building, probably, um, if, if you have thin walls. So these are things to think about. Um, and also make sure that um, the area that you live at, um, the sugar gliders are legal some places they are not for whatever reason so